Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hold My Nuggets Incorporated for your 2019 NFL Week 13 post game analysis show. I am your host, the founder and the CEO, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual, the chiseled Adonis. Let's break down what just transpired because this was, as I predicted, one of the most exciting weeks of football. We can start with the Thanksgiving edition of the games, or we had three magnificent games on Thanksgiving. Some people would say we were all entertaining. Other people would say they weren't entertaining. All I know is I didn't rise from the shadow realm. First and foremost, the Bears taking on the Lions in Ford Field, where we saw the Lions blow yet another lead. They have led in all 12 of their games this season. They have led eight times in the fourth quarter, and they blew yet another lead when we saw the Chicago Bears come back and win 24 to 20. Now, in this game, they had, uh, I believe it was David Blow, was how his name was pronounced. At first, I thought it was David, uh, 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 well, David Blau. I thought it was David Blow, so I called him David Blowjob the entire time I was doing the commentary. But, you know, it was an exciting game for what it was. On the day for the Lions, Blow had up uh, 22 for 38. 280, um, 280 on the day through the year. Two TDs, one INT. Um, on the ground, Bo Scarborough actually had a pretty good game. 21 carries, 83 yards, and out of the air, catching the football. Kenny Galladay had a day. All right, four catches, 158, and a TD. This man, every time he touched the football, you thought something dynamic was gonna happen. But did that help them win? Absolutely not, because the Bears took care of business. All right, through the air, Mitch, I'm not a bitch. Trubisky, 29 for 30. 338 on the day, three TDs, one INT, and enough to bring them back and win. The flow of this game was decent. It was decent, but in the fourth quarter, the Lions simply could not get anything going. If you look in the third, they had the lead 20 to 17 going into the fourth quarter, and then after that, they punted and an INT. More importantly, the Bears had a four minute drive that resulted in a TD, and then the, the Lions did nothing. All right, it was four plays and then a punt and then a 12-play drive that resulted in the INT. You got to learn how to finish. This is the story of the Lions season. The Lions, the Chargers, and the um, and the Panthers, all season long, they find ways to lose games in the fourth quarter. Honestly, if good coaching and execution from the players at least showed up halfway of the time, they would win about half of the games that they had lost. All of these teams could have been in playoff contention right now. Every single one of them, but all three of them, just do not know how to finish games. And it's unfortunate. For the Bears, this was a much-needed win to get back to 500. Now they're sitting at 6-6. Six and six. I still do not see a, 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 a situation in which they'll get into the playoffs. But it was a win that they definitely needed. So kudos to those guys getting it done on Thursday, on Thanksgiving, getting that W. I was very impressed at how the Lions played, but damn it, they let me down. Good job by Mitch Trubisky. I don't understand why in the... Was that the second quarter when he had an opportunity to run for a first down and then when he ended up going horizontal? They went on fourth down and then they didn't even convert it. it ended up being a turnover on downs. Mitch, get your head out of your gluteal cleft, man. But they definitely needed this victory. Kudos to them. They got a W. Next, the Bills taking on the Cowboys. This game was all Bills from start to finish, man. Cowboys ain't do nothing. Hand clap for Chlamydia Poppy. And Jason Garrett ain't do nothing when it comes to trying to coach for his team. I feel like something flew out of my mouth, landed on the side of my mouth. Thank God I got rid of it. It's unfortunate if we continue the entire video with this thing here. But still, you know, um, the, for the uh, for the Cowboys, they got to figure it out. Now, I, th I think this is their third consecutive loss. In fact, they've lost, they, they've only won three of their last nine. After starting, what was it, 3-0? and Now they're sitting at 6-6 six and six in this abysmal NFC East. I don't know what the hell's going on. Somebody need to bar the NFC East from the playoffs. But I thought, remember when the Seahawks went 7-9 and nine and they believed the, and, and they defeated the New Orleans Saints who won the Super Bowl the year before? Well, clearly, the Seahawks weren't that terrible of a team. Their record was absolutely terrible. But regardless, you saw them play good football, and when you play at home, you can get things done. The Cowboys lose on the road. The Cowboys lose on at home. All right, this is just not a good football team. NFC East playing like garbage. Dak was 32 of 49 through the year, 355 and two TDs. All right, with one INT on the ground, Zeke only gave you 71 yards, and Amari Cooper finally showed up after getting blanketed against the damn Patriots with eight catches for 85 yards. But did that help the Cowboys win? Absolutely not. Why? Because their first possessions after scoring the opening touchdown was a punt, 
a punt, an INT, a fumble, a missed field goal, another missed field goal, turnover on downs, turnover on downs, and then they finally scored at the end of the game when it didn't matter. So you scored on your first possession, you scored on your last possession, and you did nothing in between. The Bills did what Ever they wanted on the ground because everything was positive yardage. Devin Singletary only ran for 63 yards, but every single time he touched the football, it was positive yardage. All right, Josh Allen added 43 on the ground, and it was all positive yardage, especially that touchdown run. You can't deny the fact that the man played stellar. 19 of 24 for 231 and a TD. All right, and I, I said. I wanted to see Josh Allen come out, sling the football around, make me believe it. I wrote on Twitter right after the game. To Bills Mafia, I apologize for whatever I said throughout the entire year. I'm now a believer. Josh Allen, I believe in you. The same way I felt about Lamar Jackson, where I said I have some questions about him being able to throw the football, but regardless of his, him not having to throw for 300 every single week, he's able to galvanize his team and get Ws. That's what we're seeing from Josh Allen. That's why the Bills are sitting at 9-3. Josh Allen has found a way to win football games, and damn it, he takes care of that football. He takes care of that football. Good victory for the Bills, man. Good victory for the Bills. The Cowboys had 426 total offense and still find a way to lose. Still find a way to lose. They were 50 plus percent on third down. But why did they not have ample, you know, you know, opportunities to get down the field? Well, the Bills controlled the ball for about 33 minutes. And more importantly, as I said, punt, punt, INT, turnover on downs, miss field goal, miss field. Everything that could go wrong for the Cowboys went wrong. And ultimately, that's why they was riding that dog on L train. Somebody got to figure out what's going on. I heard Jerry Jones was extremely emotional. Uh, Michael Bennett was extremely emotional. All emotions are high because this team has a ton of talent. But to be quite honest with you, I think they're 0-6 now against teams or 0-5 now against teams with winning records. What does that say? Mediocrity. Mediocrity. All I know is whoever the hell they see in the first round of the playoffs, and I predict that will be the San Francisco 49ers because I already said in the beginning of the year I have San Fran, you know, being in um, the wild card. I have Seattle winning that division. Whoever the hell's that five seed, they about to slap the hell who. who Whoever the hell's in the NFC East, I'll tell you that much. Um, next, the, the Thursday night football game, the Saints got redemption on the Atlanta Falcons, who could not do anything until the late um, situation in the game. But I didn't even feel as if the Saints should have been on edge, although the um, the Falcons recovered three consecutive, you know, onside kicks. But through the air, Drew Brees was 18 for 30, um, 183 in a TD. Uh, Taysom Hill, he found a way to find the end zone. I think he blocked a kick, caught a touchdown, and ran a touchdown in. Uh, Alvin Kamara, 11 carries, 63, um, 61 yards. Uh, Michael Thomas didn't really need to make his presence felt. It, at one point, I believe it was 26 to 9. That was the exact same, you know, uh, um, score that it was. The first time that they played and then all of a sudden Atlanta found some sort of second win and started making it seem as if they was coming back after they was able to score a TD, recover an onside kick, get a field goal, recover another onside kick and then Cameron Jordan said, hey, I have three sacks already, let me go and get a fourth and end this game. All right, the Falcons did not play good coming out of the break. Matt Ryan, 35 of 50, 312 and two TDs but also two INTs. They gotta play better. And this is why the Falcons ultimately got written down that death note. They got eliminated from playoff contention. 348 yards of total offense. Not enough. They possessed the ball 35 minutes. Still wasn't enough to get the job done. What does it say? On top of that, Julio wasn't even playing this particular game. But still, I don't think he would have been a factor. They riding on that L train. The NFL game of the week. Baltimore taking on um, San Francisco. We saw the Ravens walk away with a 20-17 win. This was a very good defensive game. Very good defensive game. We saw San Francisco jump out to an early lead. I believe it was Debo Samuels caught a TD. Then Baltimore ended up punting. San Francisco gave the football right back after a fumble. Then Baltimore even up the score. I believe that was the uh, Mark Andrews touchdown that scored as 7-7. Baltimore ended up taking the lead 14-7. Then, you know, right back came Raheem Mostert, evened up the score. Field goal for field goal. Um, tied it at 17. And then through the third and fourth quarter, defenses just crunched down. And on that final possession, Lamar Jackson was able to pick up that first down and get Justin Tucker in range to go and kick that field goal. I was very impressed 
by the San Francisco 49ers defense, man. This was one of those games that gave me the feel of when the Giants played against the Patriots in 2007. Not the Super Bowl, but the last game of the regular season. Where you see the losing team and you say, man, that was impressive. Because those guys went and corralled that Ravens offense that been punching everybody week after week. They said, hey, man, we can hang. And more importantly, they showed um, the entire league that, yo, that defense is legit. A lot of people say, yo, they can go, but then you saw um, uh, 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 Seattle, you know, hang some points on them and then also would leave with that W. So people were like, oh, wait a minute, maybe they're only good because they're playing some bums. Well, they didn't play no bum this week and they held them to 20. All right, so they played a sensational game. Sensational game. Offensively, porn star Jimmy G, 15 of 21, 165 in a TD. On the ground, Raheem Mostert, 19 carries, 146 yards. I did not see that coming. For Baltimore, Lamar Jackson was 14 of 23, 105 in a TD. On the ground, he also ran for 101 yards and a TD as well. Mark Ingram got 59 yards on the ground, but the name of the game was that time of possession. Although it was a differential of that five minutes, but that played pivotal at the end of the game where we saw Baltimore possessing for 30, um, 32 minutes. All right, San Francisco also had six penalties. That came back to haunt them, um, but still, very good game. Very good game through and through. Some people were expecting more offense explosion. This was kind of what I expected to see, and Baltimore was able to walk away with the W. And now, they're sitting at the one seed because the Patriots could not get the job done on Sunday Night Football. I'll be talking about that in a little bit. Redskins taking on the Panthers. Oh, the Panthers are a disappointment. Ron, Van Ron um, Rivera just lost his job. He just got fired yesterday. I'll say this much. Panthers defense is non-existent. Adrian Peterson had 99 yards, I believe, on 13 carries. Darius Geis, 10 carries, 129 yards and two TDs. Combined, over 200 plus yards on the ground. You're not going to stop anybody if the opposing team run for 200 plus. Dwayne Haskins ain't even had to do too much. 13 to 25, 147 through the year. The Panthers cannot close games. Kyle Allen was able to bring them down the field on the final possession. And then what happened? Fumble at the freaking end of the game. Why? Because the man's running backwards. on a, Was it fourth and goal? I believe it was fourth and goal from the three. All of a sudden, the protection breaks down. This man runs like 30 yards in the opposite direction. Looked like he was participating in the Jim Marshall Challenge. This is the problem. And Carolina has screwed themselves out of three W's where they could have closed at the end of the game. Week two against Tampa. You saw them in, in the situation with Cam Newton. Are you going to sneak? No, we're going to give it to McCaffrey and try to use his speed ability and get outside. Ah -ah! Ah -ah! Said Tampa, and they lost that game. Green Bay, fourth and goal situation. Or oh, whatever. I, no, matter of fact, there was like three seconds left on the, on the clock. I think the game ended once. That, was it fourth and goal? Where he couldn't get in? Regardless, the pack said, ah -ah! You're not going to score. And then what happened this week against Washington? Ah -ah! You're not getting in. Terrible loss for Carolina. Now you're done lost your coach. This is a... Tr and I don't even believe that Ron, Van Ron Rivera should have been fired. This man aided you in getting to a Super Bowl. Let him finish the year. What's the purpose of firing him now? Let the man finish the year and then tell him, hey, bring in John Laurinaitis. Good luck in your future endeavors. What's the purpose of firing this man now? Redskins, impressive win. I did not see that coming. But for the Carolina Panthers, you got to figure out a way to close, man. You got to figure out a way to close. I'm hearing possibly North Turner could slowly strong arm his way into the head coaching job. There's a couple of other coordinators that were listed there as well. But um, for the Panthers, absolutely atrocious that they found a way to lose this game. The Jets and the Bengals. Oh, my Lord, the Jets. They gave the Dolphins their first win of the season. They now given the, the Bengals their first get, win of the season as well. Ridiculous. What are they doing? You just shellacked Oakland last week. And you can't win in Cincinnati? In Cincinnati? Andy Dalton returns back and all of a sudden the Red Rifle got mojo. 22 of 37, 243 and a DD. Where the hell was this in the beginning of the season? 
They didn't, they didn't even look impressive offensively like that. They only had 277 yards. The Jets had 271, and they could not get anywhere. Look at their possessions, all right? You had a field goal to open up the game. They jumped out to a 3-0 lead. They go and punt. They give up a touchdown. Then it's a punt, a punt. They get another field goal, and in the second half, this is their lineup. Punt, safety, punt, punt, turnover on downs, turnover on downs. Nothing. 11-play drive, turnover on downs. 10-play drive, turnover on downs. 3-and-out, 3-and-out, safety, 4-and-out. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Sam Darnold looking like he's seeing ghosts once again. Ridiculous, giving up four sacks. That O-line did them no favors. 10 penalties, shot themselves in the foot all doggone day. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Le'Veon Bell, 10 carries, 32 yards. You got inside your profile on Twitter or on Instagram, all pro. Let's do me a favor, erase that. That was the past. Get rid of that. Nobody gonna remember all them years. They gonna look at you like, what have you done for me lately? And this year was a wash. Terrible. Sam Darnold, 28 for 48, 239 on the day. No end zone, nothing. But they did get a safety, again. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Kudos to the Bengals, they got it done. But for the Jets, they need to they need to reevaluate who the hell they are, man. I don't know. I don't understand how the hell they lost that game. That that's that's ridiculous. Tennessee Titans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Well, we saw the Titans win 31 to 17. Two blocked field goals, one return for a TD, a missed field goal from Vinatieri, early fumble. Um, on, I think it was the first the first play from Tennessee. Early fumble. Jacoby Brissett was able to find Doyle in the end zone. Then Ryan Tannehill answered right back. You had the missed field goal from uh, um, um, from Vinatieri. And then after that, you know, uh, it, it, it pretty much became anybody's game. And then in the fourth quarter, that's where we saw the Titans run away. They completely ran away because the, the Indianapolis Colts could do nothing. When it was tied up 17-17, you saw a punt, another punt, blocked field goal, INT, a fumble. They did nothing in the second half. And uh, Derrick Henry is a grown man. That fourth and one carry for the TD, when the dude tried to hold his hand and pull him down, I'm telling you, when you step into the damn candy store, and you're going to buy some chocolate. Don't grab no Butterfingers. That's not what you want. Don't get no Snickers. Don't go and grab no Hershey's. You want to get the O oh, Henry because it hits a little bit harder in your soul. It gives you what you need because this is a grown man and the dreadlock powers is activated at all times. 26 carries, 49 yards, and a TD. Ryan, Jack, and Jill went up to Tannehill, 17 for 22, 182 yards, and two TDs. Very good game on their part. Jacoby Brissett, two INTs, two costly interceptions. More importantly, that INT that he threw to Logan Ryan, who, who are you throwing to? What were you doing? Ridiculous. They need Marlon Mack back. Luckily, he's coming back this upcoming week. I hear he's practicing. Matter of fact, I can't say he's coming back. But I hear he just returned back to practice. So maybe Mark Morrison could show up on the, on, on the sideline and start playing return of the Mack for this man. To get onto the field, Adam Vinatieri. I'm hearing he has some soreness in his knee. So um, I think uh, there was a there was a kicker who just got signed. Um, was it Kai Forbath who's going to Indianapolis now? Somebody just got signed to go to Indianapolis because there's some soreness in the knee for Adam Vinatieri. But good lord, what a brutal loss for the Texans. Back to back divisional um losses. Losing to the Texans, now losing to the Titans, pushing them further back. In that uh, um, wild card race, more importantly, nothing is favorable for them right now because let's just say the Texans don't win the division, they beat you before. So they stand on top of you and their record is two games ahead of yours. All right? Then you have the Titans who now have beaten you again. The Steelers already have beaten you, and if you guys both end with the same record, they have they have less losses against AFC opponents than you do too. Strength to schedule, all this other stuff. That the Colts are doing them no favors right now. They're not doing themselves any favors whatsoever, man. They got to play better football. They have to play better football. Back-to-back -back weeks, they had games in which they could have won, and they lost. I understand that ending review. I get it. I am not happy with that ending review for what happened with when they played against the Texans. I understand. But there were certain different points in that game where they could have walked away with a W, and they didn't. And now this week, 
Got to figure out a way to finish. Tampa Bay defeated the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars 28-11 to where we saw Nick Foles get pulled out of the game. And in came in Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania, 70s porn star mustache, back into the game, taking care of business. But he did it because they weren't able to come back and get that W, take their receipt to the sperm bank and get their comeback. That's not what happened. All right. Uh, Jameis Winston took care of business. And, and, and damn it, the Buccaneers played well. They played well on the ground. Peyton, no Ronnie, no Tiki Barber, two TDs. 11, 17 carries for 44 yards, but still, two TDs, Jameis Winston, 21-33, 268, but most importantly, no INTs, he did have a fumble, but no INTs, alright, uh, Nick Foles, 7 for 14, 93 yards, I think two fumbles on the day, just a brutal day for him, and after coming back from that, was it clavicle collarbone? Injury missing nine weeks coming back in week 10 week 11 now in a situation in which this man is sent back to the bench Is this the end of the Nick Foles, uh, Nick Foles experience? What's gonna happen moving forward? Is he gonna stay? Are they gonna roll with Gardner Minshew? Or are they gonna have to battle each other to see where the hell you're going? Because last I checked I think Nick Foles signed 88 million dollar deal So the Jags got to figure out what the hell they want to do but for the Bucks. This is one of the things that I expected to see from them coming into the season. But they found ways to lose games primarily because of the INTs of Jameis Winston. They could be easily be sitting on this year at 8-4. and four. Kid you not. Go through their game schedule and look at the close games that they lost. They easily could be sitting here at 8-4, and 7-5, and five, a stretch at 9-3. and three. But they got to grow from this experience. Finish the season strong. See if you can end 500 or at 9-7. and seven. It's going to be a tough stretch. But damn it, they, they're capable. They're, I believe in this offense. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, I think they're 2-3 and three on the receiving you know, leaders of this season. Get it together, guys. Finish more games. But good victory for them. For the Jags, they got to figure out what they want to do at quarterback, man. They got to figure out what they want to do at quarterback. Kansas City taking on the Oakland Gruden Grinders, who weren't. Gruden grinded 40 to 9. Necrophilia. Jeffrey Dahmer was coming onto the field. He had somebody's severed leg in his hand. Ted Bundy was holding a severed head that he knocked out with a crowbar. And everybody was wondering where the hell was the Raiders that scored 10 points to open up the game, the first game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and then gave up 28 unanswered. But what the hell? Happened on this day. You talk about not being able to finish drives. All right, an INT. They started with an INT. All right, Kansas City score. They ended up fumbling right after. Kansas City had a turnover on down. They dropped an interception that was thrown straight into their hands from Patrick Mahomes. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. They had an INT in the end zone that got reversed into defensive pass interference that led to Rashawn McCoy running the ball into the end zone. I believe that's what gave them a 31-0 lead. It was necrophilia from start to finish, man. The Raiders had their opportunities, but damn it, it was necrophilia from start to finish. Josh Jacobs went over 100 yards in the first half. He ended with 104 yards. Because obviously in the second half, you can't throw, you can't run the football no more. You got to go and throw. Derek Vehicle, 20 for 32, 22, 1 TD, 2 INTs. Not enough to get it done. You're losing by 31 now. Guys going to have to step up. People ain't step up. Nobody else stepped up. That defense did them no favors whatsoever. All right. Patrick Mahomes, 15 of 29, 175, and the TD. Not impressive by any estimation. But still, they were able to walk away with the W. Why? Because it was too far too easy for the damn uh, Kansas City Chiefs to go and get Ws because the damn, or I should say, go and get scores because the Raiders did nothing. 12 penalties on the damn Raiders, zero on the Kansas City Chiefs. That's how you lose football games. That's literally how you lose football games. Undisciplined football. John Gruden, you guys did not show up. Did not show up whatsoever. Tough loss, man. Tough loss. Eagles taking on the Dolphins. This was a very intriguing game because I did not see this coming where the Dolphins won 37 to 31. I'll say this much. The Eagles offense finally got it together and showed up. Only issue was their defense ain't get off the bus. They jumped out to a, a, a 17, pardon me, 28 to 14 lead. All right. At, at one point, it was 10-0. 
Then the um it ended up being 14-13. And then after that, after jumping out to 28 to um 28 to 14, they gave up touchdown, 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 field goal. You gotta be kidding me, stop somebody. And on top of that, one of the touchdowns was a damn punter throwing it to a kicker. What are you? Where's the defense? What are they doing? Garbage. Garbage. Carson Wentz actually showed up. 28 for 46, 310 yards, three TDs, one INT. On the ground, Miles Sanders ran for 83 yards through the air. All Sean Jeffrey came back, nine catches, 137 yards, and the TD. But on the other side, Ryan Fitzpatrick turned into Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then in the second quarter became Ryan Fitzmagic because it was 30, 27 for 39, 365, three TDs, and one INT. He took care of business. To every time Devontae Parker caught the football, his shoulder pads, or I should say his nutsack, was on the defender's shoulder pads. Whether it was Darby or it was Mills, somebody was being told to hold his nuggets and he made sure that they sucked his dick with seven catches, 459 yards, and two TDs. Where was the secondary coverage? It did not exist. These guys came to play against New England and then just said, I, right, I'm gonna head out, and just left. Gone. Garbage. Atrocious possess the game of football, man. Ten penalties. They were thirty. They were they were fifty percent on third down. Offense did everything that you needed. Literally did everything that you needed, and you found a way to lose. This is why the NFC East sucks, man. This is why the NFC East sucks, man. I think they only got ten wins collectively outside of their division. The entire NFC East. It's 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 it, it, oh my god, it's terrible, bro. It's terrible. Watching that game, just, what is wrong with y'all? Te- Eagles? Ridiculous. And after Doug Peterson, hey, that's a very good football team. They're 3-9. and nine. That's not to say they're not a good football team. Good Lord. We thought the Dolphins could mess around and not win a football game a few weeks back. That they beat the Jets, and then all of a sudden, they won, they won two consecutive games. I think they beat the, uh, the Colts. Then they went back to looking mediocre, and now they shellacked the Eagles who had an opportunity to bounce back after you watched the Cowboys lose on Thanksgiving. Ridiculous. Uh, Danny Dimes and the Giants took that L in the Meadowlands to uh, A.A. Ron and the Packers 31-13. to This was a simple game. I, I said, hey, if you have Aaron Rodgers in your fantasy, this was the game to start him. 21 of 33, 243, four TDs, no INTs. Took care of business in the snow. It was far too easy. Danny Dimes, discount Eli Manning out there because he threw three INTs. Vintage Eli Manning, and it could become vintage Danny Dimes. I hear now he's in a walking boot. Eli's going to be returning back to his job. Get ready for the jokes. That's going to be entertaining. Saquon Barkley looked like he got out of his funk with 19 carries for 83 yards. But outside of that, they did nothing. Look at the Giants' possessions. Punt, then they got a TD. INT, a field goal, went to the half. Field goal, INT, INT, turnover on down. You can't win football games like that, especially when you're trailing. You're losing uh, 24 to 13, your result in the fourth quarter, INT, INT, turnover on downs. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Could not get it done. The Giants, terrible football team, sitting at 2 and 10. All right, 2 and 10. And they won the time of possession battle, but they did absolutely nothing. All right, they didn't even give up a sack, and they still could not, you know, matriculate the ball down the field. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. 335 yards of total offense that went to absolute shit. Did nothing for them. Gotta be kidding me. Cardinals and the Rams, necrophilia in favor of the Rams. The Cardinals could never get anything going. In fact, I believe the Cardinals scored all the way in the fourth quarter. It was like 34-0. to They did nothing. They did nothing. This is exactly what the Rams needed. Getting out of their funk, mentally feeling like they're a decent football team. Jared did not look like Ryan Gosling, did not look like a liability. Golf went out there, 32 for 43, 424, two TDs on the ground. Uh, you had 95 yards from Todd Gurley and the TD. Robert Woods, 13 catches, 172 yards. Uh, Tyler Higby, seven catches, 107 yards and the TD. They took care of business. Kyler Murray, he looked like a rookie this game because that defense was getting after them. And I told you guys Aaron Donald was going to have a virtuoso performance. Now, granted, he only had one uh, a sack and a half. But still, it was a very good game from the Rams altogether. 
very good game. They got to they got to Kyler Murray six different times. They possessed the ball 34 minutes. They were 50 plus percent on third down and still was able to walk away with a, a 549 yards of total offense. Straight up necrophilia. Straight up necrophilia. Ted Bundy was on the field in Arizona. Good victory for the Rams. Chargers and Broncos, I'll say this. Drew Locke came out, started his very first game of his career, found Cole and Sutton back-to-back -back times, looked very impressive. They jumped out to a 17-3 lead. All of a sudden, Phillip, anti-condom, no pull-out Poppy Rivers, came and showed up. Finally started playing very good football. Tied the damn score up. You sitting at 20-20. Final possession. It's... The, the Broncos gotta go like 60 yards or like 40 yards to get a field goal position. Casey Hayward's defensive pass interference. And I know what people were saying. Well, Casey Hayward, or I should say uh, Cortland Sutton ran into Casey Hayward. You know, he was trying to play the ball. No, you gotta know better than that. You're a veteran in this league. You gotta know better than that. When I saw the ball in the air and I saw Casey Hayward there, I'm like, oh yeah, he's just gonna, you know, go where the ball is and knock the ball. He went to the, there's no way you can completely misjudge a ball like this. He single-handedly put Denver in field goal position for Brandon McManus to put it through the uprights and good. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. This was, this was one of those games where the Chargers just continually find a way to break their fans' heart. And now, no charges, no. Eight of their losses, all of them by seven points or less. You you cannot write a better story of heartbreak than being a Charger fan. This is the same problem they've had this side of the millennium. Every single year, they find ways to lose games they should be winning. And I don't want to hear anybody talking about Anthony Lynn. I don't want to hear anybody talking about maybe they should take away this man's job. It's players failing to execute. Bottom line, players failing to execute. There are there are times in which you can take a look at the coaching and say there's a ton of ineptitude, and you would be right with that. You would absolutely be right with that. But games like this, when you see them fight back, and you they lose on some, you know, uh, a Melvin, a uh, Van Van Horn, or or, 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 or Sideshow Mel, bonehead move, where they're stupid and don't use their common sense. That's what it's like to be a Chargers fan. It's unfortunate. Garbage. Absolute garbage. But hell of a start for Drew Locke. He took care of business. Good victory for the Denver Broncos. For the Chargers, one more week and then you fixing to get written down in the death note, man. I don't know what the hell's wrong with these guys. Sunday night football. Patriots taking on the Texans. Bravo. Bravo to the damn Houston Texans. Up to this point in this particular game, or I should say going into this game, Patriots defense only gave up four passing touchdowns the entire year. Deshaun Watson walked in and said, fuck your rules, fuck your history, and threw for three TDs, all right? 18 of 25, 234, three TDs. Took care of business. The ground game, Duke Johnson, or I should say Duke Johnson altogether, played an extremely good game. All right, nine carries, 36 yards, and then he had five catches for 54 yards and the TD. But every single time this man touched the football, it was something positive. Every single time. Stephon Gilmore just came off of blanketing freaking, or I should say putting a zero, zilch, nada, on, on, on Amari Cooper. And then he gave up, what, three catches to uh, DeAndre Hopkins? But still, he played a very good game. I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, well, you know what? DeAndre won the game. Therefore, that means he won the matchup. No, nah, not really. Not really. Stephon Gilmore was doing his job. The rest of the defense, not so much. The offense of the Patriots was absolutely atrocious. All right, dropping, they, they, I think they were down uh, uh, 21 to three at one point. Look at their possessions after scoring on their opening drive. Interception, punt, 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 turnover on downs. Then they finally scored a touchdown on their last three possessions, but it was a little too late. And more importantly, their last two possessions, you talk about a lack of sense of urgency. If you were watching me live on Hot Mike, you would see me say it throughout the entire game. These guys were playing the same way the Eagles were playing in Super Bowl 39. You're down by two possessions. Why the hell are you so casually going down the field? You got five minutes left to play. You barely have any timeouts remaining. Why are your guys walking back to the huddle? Why is a pass that's complete for like a gain of three? People are about like 
maybe 10 yards away. They're just walking to get back in the huddle. Even Brady didn't have a sense of urgency. They found a way to go and lose that game because mentally they weren't even there. The Texans took care of business, man. They took care of business. And more importantly, kudos to that defensive line and the defensive coordinator and Romeo Cornell. Everybody for Houston took care of business. They had Brady under duress all day, all day. They only sacked him three times, but it felt like they could have got him about seven or eight. 35 minutes time of possession, they took care of business. Texans played great football, great football, and handed those Patriots the L. But I'll say this much, people who are criticizing the, uh, the Patriots so much, well, you ain't play nobody. Whenever you play against a real team, you lose. Can we stop singing the same old story every single year? This team is 10 and two. Regardless of whatever the hell you saw all season, they're still 10 and two. Why is it that every single time the Patriots lose a game, it's like the other team should, have, should be celebrating like they won a Super Bowl or people act like the Patriots loss is a Super Bowl loss? Is that because we're so conditioned to seeing them winning all the time that the immediately after they lose a game, all of a sudden it's some, oh my God, is Tom Brady the cause of their problems? Should Bill, is Bill Belichick losing the motion or uh, losing his mojo? Dude, it's one game. It is literally one game. Snap out of it. Yes, they lost back-to-back -back games on prime time. I understand. But still, calm down. Because every time everybody's so quick to say, yo, the Patriots is overrated, yo, they garbage. They mess around and they in the game playing for the Lombardi. And you sitting at home wondering why your team in the AFC couldn't get there. Let's pump the brakes real quick. Let's pump the brakes real quick. The only two losses was on the road. All they need is Baltimore to mess up one time and they mess around and still have, you know, an advantage through the playoffs in the AFC and now we're sitting in the same position. Be careful what you wish for, man. Be careful what you wish for. Monday Night Football, sensational game. And more importantly, before I say, um, finish that off, just kudos to the, um, to, to the, uh, the Houston Texans. Very good game. That's how football should be played. And that option call from DeAndre Hopkins, or I should say it was a Watson took the snap, he gave it to Duke Johnson, then Duke Johnson gave it to DeAndre Hopkins, then he optioned it back to Watson. Beautiful football. Beautiful football. I don't think I've ever seen a play like that in the NFL. And if it did happen, I cannot recall it. Whatever the case was, I was bewildered when I saw them call that play. I said, oh my lord, somebody better go and check uh, Bill O'Brien for, for um, testicular cancer because this man's got balls. He must have balls. But great victory for those guys. Happy for him. Monday Night Football, another instant classic. Instant classic. All right, Kirk, family member, 0-8 on Monday Night Football. All right, but he actually played decent. 22 of 38, um, 276, two TDs, one INT. Russell Wilson, uh, 21 of 31, 240, two TDs, one INT because this man was playing volley um, volleyball. On the ground, Chris Carson, 23 carries, 101 yards and a TD. Rashad Penny, 15 for 74 and a TD. Very good game. I'll say this much. Um, the Vikings jumped out to that 17 to 10 lead going into halftime where they were able to answer um, after that pick six volleyball thing from Russell Wilson. Then they went down the field. They got a Dan Bailey um, field goal. They had two opening touchdowns. Uh, oh, I should say the one touchdown, then the um, the field goal. Uh, no, the pick six and then the field goal. And then the second half, or primarily the third quarter, the Seahawks 24-0 to zero run. TD. Um, TD. Field goal. TD. TD into the third quarter and oh, onto the fourth quarter and then the Vikings had a resurgence with back-to-back -back scores. Then they scored 13 on answer. It's like, oh, wait a minute, you don't want to let Kirk Cousins get the football back because maybe he's going to turn something into, and then it was turnover on downs. And then he couldn't find his man. Kirk Cousins is a lot like going to a bar, getting a phone number only to find out that you ain't have no cell service. That's what it's like. That's what it's like being a fan of Kirk Cousins, or more importantly, having him as your quarterback. Starts to get your hopes up. He goes and talks to the girl. He gets the phone number, but he never paid his phone bill. So when he tries to go make that phone call, this number is not in service. Son, sick. Sick. Another great primetime performance from the Seattle Seahawks, man. This was a very good game. This was a very good game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. 444 yards of total offense for the Seahawks on the ground. 210, as I said. They had the ball 39 minutes. 
What did that mean? When the Vikings had the rock, they scored early, they scored often. But for the Seahawks, methodically going down the field. Their touchdown drives, all right? 14 play, 75 yard drive, eight minutes, okay? Um, nine play, 56 yard drive, four minutes, 20 seconds. Their field goal was three minutes. Uh, um, the other TD was, was 251 and the other TD was 135. Well, regardless, long ass drives that they had eaten up the clock. If a team possesses the ball for 40 minutes, you not most likely gonna beat that team. Unless, of course, um, I think there was a game last week where we saw a team possess the ball for 40 minutes, but they was getting sh the, the other team was getting shellacked. Was it Baltimore and I think it was Baltimore and who did they beat last week? Why is this escaping me? Who did Baltimore beat last week? Baltimore beat somebody. They had the other team had the ball for like 40 minutes, but they were getting shellacked. Regardless, last but not least, Steelers taking on the Browns, in which we silenced the uh, the critics. And the Pittsburgh was able to walk away with the W. I'll say this much. Quack, 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 quack. The duck has shown up. 18 for 32, 196 TD and a terrible INT on the ground. Oh, pardon me. That was Baker Mayfield's statistic. All right. Duck was 14 of 21, 212, a TD and an INT. Uh, Baker Mayfield was 18 32, uh, for 32, 196 and the TD. There was virtually no real run game in this game. So without that, it became the Baker Mayfield show. And what happened? People ain't show up. Jarvis had six catches for 76 yards, but you ain't feel that 76. OBJ had three catches for 29 yards. The Browns jumped out to a 10-0 lead and did nada outside of their first, um, um, two of their first three possessions. What happened after they took the 10-3 lead? Punt, turnover on downs, fumble, punt, field goal, of punt, INT. More importantly, the name of the game was the, the defensive line and the linebackers for the um the Steelers because they got to Baker Mayfield five times and it felt like they were going to hit him every single time he dropped back. Bud Dupree was in his face. Javon Hargrave was in his face. Cam Hayward was in his face. TJ Watt was in his face. They were in his face all day. And the Steelers' old line protected Delvin Hodges because he only got sacked one time and he really only got touched up like three on the entire game. Baker Mayfield was getting hit left and right uh, and right before halftime he had to leave the game. Hell of a game by the Steelers man. Hell of a game by the Steelers. They took care of business. They're still sitting at the sixth seed at seven and five. I'm excited to see how far this football team can go. No Big Ben. No Le'Veon Bell. No AB. No Juju Smith-Schuster, no James Conner, bunch of other people getting hurt, Marquise Pouncey suspended, and still sitting here at 7-5. and five. Mike Tomlin is the front runner, in my opinion, for Coach of the Year. I understand what Shanahan is doing out there in the 49er land. All right, I see what John Harbaugh is doing out there in MNT Bank Stadium in Baltimore, in, in Baltimore land. All right, I see what all these other coaches is doing. But you got to consider who the hell took the toughest route to get to where the hell they're going. If Mike Tomlin gets the Steelers to the postseason and they win a damn postseason game, coach of the year. Coach of the year. And that's all bias aside. Kid you, that there is nobody could have foresaw. Once Big Ben got hurt and the Steelers were sitting at 0-3, nobody foresaw them sitting at 7-5 at this point. Everybody wrote them off and Mike Tomlin found a way to galvanize this team to go and get W's. I am proud of that football team and damn it, I'm happy for Mike Tomlin because everybody who was writing this man off hell, I came up coming into this season, I said, hey, I'll give you the pass because of all the trial and tribulation, but it's on you to turn this team around and he did nothing but prove me right and show why the hell people should believe in Mike Tomlin. Hell of a goddamn coaching job from him. But that has been your 2019 NFL Week 13 Post Game Analysis Show. I have been your host, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, individual, the chiseled Adonis. I know it's late. You can always watch this on the playback. Luckily on YouTube, it's not as if it's some sort of premiere that you catch live. And then if you don't see it, um, then you don't see it. You watch it when you watch it. I'm going to have the uh, pre-game picks up um, tomorrow, uh, probably about, I want to say noon, but maybe about like a 3 o'clock. I will be going live on Hot Mike. I'm going to leave a promotional video at the end here. Uh, but yeah, man, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm not going back to the Shadow Realm, so I guess I'll just take my palm and uh, face it towards the camera and then shove it straight in your faces. <laughs>